Hi, everyone. This is Kat Wong on the Value Vibes. Junta, we do the Value Vibes fingers. <laughs> so thank you all for tuning in today. We have Junta here, um, who is VP of Financial Service at Databricks. And I'm so excited to have him here. He is a SME um, in all you know aspects when it comes to data and AI. And so I figured it'd be really great to have him on the show to kind of talk about um, just a little bit around data and AI and a little bit more around um, how companies should really think about data and AI. Uh, so Junta, I'll give you a um, second to introduce yourself. Sure. My name is uh, Junta Nakai. I head up financial service, cybersecurity, and sustainability go-to-market at Databricks, and I'm excited to be here. Amazing. Um, so a few questions that we have today is one is around what is the most important things for companies to think about before becoming a data and AI driven company? Yeah, I think the most important thing that a company has to think about is where the data is coming from, who has access to that data, how trustworthy is that data and where that data is going. And in you know industry parlance, that just simply means data governance. And why that's critically important is because unless you trust your data, you're not going to be able to make you know, accurate data-driven decisions to drive your business forward. And if you start with the idea of data governance, data, data lineage, data equality, data observability, there's so many different kind of, kind of components to that. Once you have that set and that data stack and ecosystem figured out, it helps you to really drive you know, good decisions based on good data. Otherwise, you know, with bad data, you make bad decisions with high confidence. And this is one of the, the key tenets of what companies have to think about before they become data and AI companies. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I know having worked with a lot of financial companies, governance is really huge um, and a big piece of it. And so um, part two of the question is like, how do we practically get started in generative AI and what's the potential impact on the industry? Well, let, let me take the you know potential impact question first. So, you know, they often say that you know we under you overestimate the impact of technology in the short run and and underestimate in the long run. I think AI and maybe generative AI specifically that could be flipped, where the impact in the short run could actually be much bigger than what people are thinking. And if you look out five years from now. Every company has to become an AI company. I think there's broad agreement there. But that's the, so becoming an AI company is going to be the moat around your business, your competitive advantage, that moat. But if you think about it, what makes that moat deep and wide is data, right? So you have to figure out that data component first. And specifically, how do you get started in Gen AI? Well, I spend a lot of time talking to regulated customers. And the vast majority of kicking the tires around Gen AI today are around you know, internal use cases, right? Because of the heavily you know, regulated nature. And if you're trying to prove success in Gen AI, you have to find a narrow scope use case with data that's not that sensitive, where the errors are easily identifiable and correctable by humans. Okay, now there, I said a lot, right? So, but but simply a narrow use case not so sensitive data where the mistakes can be easily fixed and identified by humans. That's how you practically get started on Gen AI to get ex to get excitement around the business to you know answer to your CTO who wants Gen AI yesterday um, and and then start your your track towards becoming a company that can effectively use um, AI in you know, ultimately the products and services that you provide to your customers and and that helps Gen AI move from you know internal POCs, internal use cases, to customer facing use cases, right? And that another way to think about that is sort of cost saving use cases to revenue generating use case. And I think that's where the ultimate goal is going to be. I love that. I, I would actually definitely agree. Having spoken to a lot of customers, just from a value perspective, um, you know, you know, the narrow use case and use cases with a low error rate, for example, um, definitely makes a lot of sense. Um, I know personally, a lot of customers are like, hey, let's just get started internally. How do we, you know, do start, um, you know, within that path internally, because data um, is, is kind of with, within the company as opposed to um, a bigger risk when it's customer facing. Absolutely. Um, and the third question we have is how do we democratize data across the organization and, and what's the risk and return around that? Yeah, I mean, you know, 
I think it, it ties into the first question you asked, which is about governance, right? Once you understand and trust your data and understand who has access to it, then you could democratize. One of our customers often tells me that, you know, data should be like electricity. It should be in a utility within a company. That's the ultimate goal, right? You know, when you turn on your light switch, you just expect it to work. When you, you know, when you turn on your TV, you expect it to work. You, you charge, you know, put on your washing machine, it, you expect it to work. The, the amount of data that you have access to should always be, you know, scalable, available, trustable, and, and available to you whenever you need it. That's the ultimate goal of democratizing data. Now, the risk of that, especially in a regulated industry, there's always a conflict, right? Because on one end, from a compliance perspective, regulatory perspective, you want to lock things down. On the other hand, from a business perspective, you want to democratize access to that data to as many people as possible to generate business value from the data. So sometimes those two things are, you know, historically, those two things were competing. Um, what we've learned uh, recently is that they don't need to be competing, right? Mm -hmm. So things like Unity Catalog that Databricks provides, which is end-to-end -end governance and lineage of, of your data, enable data to actually be democratized across an organization while managing the risks. So therefore, you could capture the rewards from that data. So, you know, I think that's where the industry is headed. That's what, you know, Databricks is certainly headed. And, and that's what makes me so excited to be here. Yeah, thank you so much. That's super helpful. Well, we're really excited to have you on the show. Um, and I know we have several other topics coming up. So so for those of you listening, tune in. Um, there's a lot of exciting topics uh, with Junta here. Um, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. Thank you.